Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to cover section 2.6, the Leontief input-output model. Leontief was the mathematician or the economist from the beginning of the beginning of chapter one that I talked about a little bit. Um, and here we have another application um, to all of this linear algebra that we're that we're discovering. Okay. So we start out the section with a few with with the setup for this scenario, and we have our economy divided into n sector there would be you know hundreds or thousands of sectors in a real economy um, in our little microcosm economy there's only going to be like three sectors to keep things reasonable um, we define a production vector as some vector x in rn that is the output of each sector for one year so that's a production vector out an open sector is another part of the economy not one of these sectors but it's a, it's one that only consumes goods or services we define a final demand vector. We're going to use a D for that. That lists the values of the goods or services demanded by the non-producing part. And then our intermediate demand is goods that are produced to meet demand, um, or as goods are produced to meet demand, additional demand is needed. So as energy is produced to meet the needs of some other sector of the economy, more energy is needed to continue to produce that additional energy, right? As more is needed, as more is created, more is needed, okay? And then we define, we have this equation at the bottom here where the amount produced X is equal to the intermediate demand plus the final demand. And in this model, what Leontief was really asking was whether there is some production level, that's our vector X, such that the amounts that are produced or supplied in the economy will exactly balance the total demand for that production. He was all about that, that equilibrium state. We'll start out with a smaller example so we can hopefully understand what's going on here. We have an economy that consists of just three sectors, manufacturing, agriculture, and services, and it lists the inputs consumed per unit of output. So in the example, example one, we want to produce 100 units um, to, in this economy, and we want to figure out what will be consumed by the manufacturing sector. Okay, if I want to produce 100 units in my economy, what is the manufacturing sector going to consume? So we're going to take column one because column one represents manufacturing's inputs consumed per unit of output. I want to output 100 units. So this is what I need to output 100 units. All right. So the work-wise, all that we need to do for this example is take 100 times C1. Okay, to produce 100 units of output, I multiply 100 times column 1. So that is 100 times 0 0.50, 0 0.20, and 0.10. And that is equal to, of course, 50, 20, 10. 50, 20, 10 as a vector. And so then we interpret that, right? In order to produce 100 units of output, we need 50 units of manufacturing or 50 units from manufacturing, from would be better. 50 units from manufacturing, 20 units from, uh, what's the second one, agriculture, and 10 units from services. All right, so now we got this sentence popping on the screen here. Taking it in the more general terms, if the manufacturing sector decides to produce X1 units of output, then X1 times C1, that vector, represents the intermediate demands of manufacturing. Okay, so what I mean by that is that X1, C1, put a little star there, X1, C1 will be consumed in creating x1 units of output. In order to put out x1 units of output, I need to consume x1 times c1. Okay, hopefully that is kind of, kind of makes sense. Uh, and so the way that we think about this, the intermediate demand, I am t, oops. The intermediate demand is equal to x1 c1 
plus x2, c2, plus x3, c3, which we are just going to label as capital C times x, where capital C is called our consumption matrix. Consumption matrix because it's what we're consuming in order to produce something. All right, capital C is our consum consumption matrix. And then, uh, so we can write it this way. And, and for this problem, it is just those three vectors, C1, C2, and C3, which is 0 0.50, 0 0.40, 0 0.20, 20, 30, and 10, and then 10, 10, and 30. And then so if we take our amount produced is equal to the intermediate demand plus the final demand D, right? So we can substitute in here that X is equal to C times X plus D. X equals CX plus D. And one looks capital and one looks lowercase, but they're both supposed to be lowercase X's, right? And our goal in this section is to then solve for that vector x, solve for my three unknowns, x1, x2, x3, all right? And in order to do that, we are going to write, instead of just that vector x on the left-hand side of the equation, I'm going to write it as i times x, right? Now it's not a vector, it's a matrix that is the same size as c. i times x is equal to x, but I can, I can put, I can just multiply by the identity because that doesn't change anything. But what it's going to allow me to do is to write ix minus cx is equal to d, and then I can factor that common vector x from both terms, and I'm going to factor the x, notice the x is on the right there, so I'm going to factor on the right hand side, i minus c times x is equal to D. I minus C times X equals D. And that is how we go about solving this Leontief input output model or these these Leontief input output model problems. We set we find our consumption matrix, subtract that consumption matrix from the identity, and then how do I solve this matrix equation for the vector X? Augment with D row operations. Okay, so. Uh, that's what the model looks like. This this is what the model looks like. This is how we solve it. All right. So let's look at an example next. Actually, we go back to the previous economy where we've got our consumption matrix that we've already written down, and then it says suppose the final demand suppose the final demand is 50 units for manufacturing. 30 units of agriculture, 20 units of services. Find the production level to satisfy that demand. Okay, so we've got our consumption matrix written down. I'm going to write down my demand vector, uh, 50, 30, and 20, right? And the goal is to set up that augmented matrix and go through our row operations, okay? But first, I have to find I minus C. Okay, that's a crucial, crucial step. If you just augment C with your D column, you are incorrect. It is the identity minus C. Because we have the vector X appearing two times in the model, right? I need to you know, subtract and factor in order to solve for X. So I minus C, we're going to take a 3 by 3 identity, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and subtract the consumption matrix, 50, 40, 20, 20, 30, 10, 10, 10, 30. And think about what's going to happen with that subtraction. Everything off the diagonal is negated. Everything on the diagonal is subtracted from 1. So 0 0.50, negative 40, negative 0.20, negative 0.20. This would be positive 0.70 negative point 10 oops negative point ah mess that up negative point 10 negative point 10 and point 70 so that is my i minus c matrix all right that's crucial crucial that you set it up correctly all right so then we augment that with our d demand vector 50 40 
negative 0 0.10, negative point, I did it again, negative 0 0.10, negative 0 0.10, 0 0.70, augment that with 50, 30, 20. Whew. All right, lots of writing there. But you should use your calculator, put it into reduced row echelon form. You do get the identity on the left, and then the vector, the solution vector looks like this. 226, 119, and 78. So the interpretation of that is in order to produce 50 units of, uh, of, of manufacturing it, to meet the demand of my economy, I need to create 226 units of manufacturing. In order to produce 30 units of agriculture, I need 119 units of agriculture. In order to produce 20 units of services, I need to create 78 units of services. That's how that works. We kind of end this section with a theorem, no other examples. Uh, the theorem is significant because it guarantees a solution. If our consumption matrix and the vector D have non-negative entries, and if the columns of C are all have a sum of less than one, then we're guaranteed that the inverse exists and therefore that we have a solution to x equals cx plus d. So that's kind of cool. Um, there's also something that I'm not going to get into any examples of it, um, but I would suggest that you read, let's see, what is it, pages? Uh, it's actually at the top of page 137 in the text. Um, and it, it, it goes on to explain that this scenario would be re would, would happen multiple times in, within the structure of this economy, right? To meet the initial demand of C times D, industries need to create more, right? So we would multiply C times C times D. It, it's, it's kind of a cool read, uh, but it just means that like this process, as you create more demand, you need to produce more to meet that demand. As you produce more, you need to produce even more to meet that new demand. But it's, it's a good read. I suggest reading through it. Um, otherwise, that is the end of the video. Thank you very much for listening. Get to work on your homework and have a wonderful day.